My name is Yvonne Rodriguez, and right now I am an early interventionist. My name is Natalia Torres Agosto. I am a homemaker. Everything started since I was pregnant with her. Towards the whole pregnancy, we, I had contractions. I was not feeling well. I was depressed, so instead of having postpartum depression, I had prepartum depressions. I started noticing since he was born and the way that he always had issues with growing, like his development. He had a, had a hard time sleeping. We'll go to sleep at 3 a.m. He barely took naps and babies are supposed to be sleeping mostly, uh, especially new ones. But after that, everything seemed normal. Once she started walking, she ran, tippy toes. When she was two, she was in a terrible twos that it never ended. When he turned like two years old, then he started losing um, things that he used to do. He, he started losing those skills. So he stopped like making eye contact. And he would get really, really, um, aggressive. There was no words, no eye contact. She wouldn't want me to hold her. It was very hard to keep her still. Of course, I was in denial, but I did everything. I went through all the steps. And a little bit before she was three, she was diagnosed with autism. The neurologist did the, the, the whole process and evaluation and and he said that um, Andrew had autism. After the diagnosis, she started receiving occupational therapy and speech therapy, which did not help at all. I, I would say the first three or four years of her receiving it, it did not, did nothing. It was more painful for the therapist, but I was giving it to her for the peace of mind that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing to help her and help myself. Because the stress level with her behavior in the home was so high all the time. Andrew had so many therapies. He, uh, speech therapy, we did um, occupational therapy, we did um, ABA therapy, that is a behavioral therapy, but we did it at home because there's different options. And what worked for us was that he was doing almost 30 hours at home of therapy. Just one therapy was almost 30 hours. Crystal didn't speak until she was eight. Toilet training didn't happen until she was almost nine years old. Crystal um, would not let me hug her would not let me come for her. It was impossible to have a normal life or a social life or go to church or do the regular things that a family does. I feel like people are so hurt because they feel so alone and it's hard to connect with other parents sometimes. Um, but then I did found eventually parents in, in the other school that we went and um, it, that was very helpful. And I became more like a, a parent that will help other parents. So that way I, I, I feel like if, if I, I, I couldn't receive what I needed, I'm gonna give it. Her behavior was very erratic. She put herself in danger many, many times. She will run to the street, she will open the doors of the car, she will, I lost her several times in the store. Um, a lot of stories of putting herself in danger. Um, and I uh, didn't know how to work with that, even though I've been a teacher for many, many years. Crystal started getting better when she was eight, when the combination of speech therapy, occupational therapy, and they started swinging her. They started 
making her jump. And they started doing all these movements that she literally started waking up. So for the first time, when she was eight, almost nine, she started really showing improvements. And um, I, would, I always say physical therapy was the trigger, but of course, God in all of this and prayers and she is a different person. She, she really achieved a lot. I always say you don't see autism, you leave autism because um, my boy, he looks, he is normal, right? Because I, I believe that they are all no normal, but he looks normal for society. So I do, I do believe that families need um, therapy and uh, especially their siblings. Um, I believe siblings are the ones that suffer the most. Because their siblings that are typical kids, um, they struggle with the understanding that, okay, we allow Andrew to do certain things in a way, or we need to be more kind to Andrew, more patient. For the future, I see my son being independent. I see him um, enjoying doing the things he loves. I see him um, surrounded by people that love him. She still has her moments of not understanding what's going around and reacting to it, but she's easily guided to snap out of it. So I'm very, very proud of her with that. So I think, I think she's doing great. I'm happy with where she's at right now. You can do this even when it's hard. Um, hard doesn't mean bad. And I know that even when it's hard, just because you love your kids so much, you're gonna do anything you have to do. For us parents, we just got it. But there's people who want to be part of it and they just need the information. And sometimes they don't even know how, how to start, where to start, what is appropriate, what is not, how to approach. The umbrella is big and it keeps growing. <laughs> it needs to keep growing. <laughs>